Where's SBD? Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh. I am baking brownies in the back door. Oh. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it smells just like food. Oh. Hey, uh, Hank, you want a cupcake? What, you got one? Cupcake. Oh, <laughs> knock it off. Said you wanted a cupcake. Oh. Hey, oh. A Very Venture Halloween is either a special, or the season 5 premiere, or the second episode of season 5, depending on who you ask. But canonically, it occurs during the events of What Color Is Your Clean Suit? It first aired on October 28th, 2012, and was written by Doc Hammer. In it, it's Halloween and Dr. Orpheus hosts an event for magic guys, while Hank, Dean, and Dermot get into spooky hijinks around the compound. <laughs> First up, let's run through the costumes. Dermot is dressed as the title character from the movie The Crow. Hank is dressed as either Bag of Hank or a California Raisin. The California Raisins were anthropomorphic claymation raisins who were the spokesmen for raisins in the 80s. Pete White is dressed up as David Bowie, while Billy is dressed up as Rusty Venture. And Dragoon is dressed up as Rosie Greer's character from the movie The Thing with Two Heads, in which a black man's head is attached to a racist white man's body. Later in the episode, the alchemist refers to him as Al Jolson, who was a performer known for doing blackface. Dr. Orpheus and Jefferson Twilight play a game at the party. With the weight of a plume. As inflexible as cut timber. We raise a lot. <laughs> This is a reference to the game Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board, in which a group repeats that phrase over and over while attempting to pick someone up. Let's break down what Ben says about Dean. No acro <laughs> This is a rare genetic disorder with many symptoms, which somewhat resemble whatever is going on with Rico. Feel free to Google. With comorbid idiopathic hirsutism in the orbital region. The orbital region is the eyes, and hirsutism is hairiness. So this could potentially be a reference to the monarch. Yet clear early stage androgenic alopecia. Poor little bastard. Put simply, he's starting to lose his hair. Probably a genetic source as the testosterone balance seems adequate judging from the near Lanugo facial display. And Dean's got peach fuzz on his lip. Uh, pupillary response good. The subject is free of any fetiform teratoma and appears to have normal heart and lung function. A tumor resembling a malformed fetus a callback to Jonas Venture Jr. There's no confirmation on this either way, but since Ben is established as a contemporary of Jonas Venture, it's possible that he's supposed to be Benton Quest, the father of Johnny Quest, or in this universe, Action Johnny. At this point, we've met all the main characters from Johnny Quest, except for Benton. After Red Mantle says he's going to literally pull a rabbit from a hat, the alchemist asks, so where's the twist, Bullwinkle? This is a reference to the Rocky and Bullwinkle interstitial in which Bullwinkle pulls a rabbit from a hat. The Pleasure Toast Guy is a riff on the Hellraiser series in which people had to solve puzzles to escape torture from the Cenobites. This episode drops us straight into Dean's new goth look and Sergeant Hatred having boobs. Context will be given for that in the next episode, What Color Is Your Clean Suit? Dr. Venture making Dermot ring the doorbell in this scene is a subtle reference to the fact that Dr. Venture is now aware that Dermot is his son, which he figured out in From the Ladle to the Grave. You were very hard on that boy. I have my reasons. Wait, Pictel? And, and he's... 17. No, no, that's... The... I, um... <laughs> This interview is over. This episode sees the return of Curse, not Chris, whose name people are still having trouble with. That was a nice attempt at a conjuring by our friend Chris. Curse! And what now Chris? we Curse. have... Okay, Curse. Was it Curse or a Chris? Curse! We can use magic, right? That's kind of my bag. Of course! Oh, yeah. After the Master shows up at the Brimstone Assembly, the Alchemist says it's about time he's met the Master, a reference to his and Jefferson's frustration about not being introduced previously. I must seek guidance from the Master! Wait here, please. Oh, come on! We're supposed to be a team! How come we never get to see this all-knowing guy with you? Yeah, tell the truth. You're embarrassed of us, aren't you? Nice little detail in this scene, the arachnid research sign alludes to the fact that Dr. Orpheus lives in the former arachnid research lab. All right, Dean, he's not a vampire, he's a doctor, and he's renting out the old advanced arachnid research lab from me, so don't scare him away with your nonsense. We need the money. <laughs> Thank you. 
This episode has a lot of cool bits. The opening with the past several Halloweens, how slick all the zombie stuff looks, the return of H. John Benjamin as the master, and the introduction of Ben. Of all the minor characters on the show, I think I'd be most interested in seeing more of Ben. But perhaps the single thing that stuck with me the most about this episode is the closing monologue in which Dr. Orpheus suggests that Halloween costumes are just a representation of our true selves and who we wish to be. I love that thought, and I love the Venture Brothers. As always, thank you for watching and go Team Venture. Tune in next week for What Color Is Your Clean Suit? If you dug this video, share it with a friend, and if there was some huge glaring thing that I missed in this video, follow me on Instagram at VentureVerseGuide to see these videos a week early and offer your input before I upload the vital product.